it's me, Crystal, and today I'm going to show you how to make this easy, chunky crochet rug. For this rug, I'm using Bobbini Jumbo 9mm braided cord. Normally this is used for macrame, but you can also use it for crochet, knitting, and all kinds of things. And I'll be using a 16mm crochet hook. I got this big wooden one. And you'll also need one stitch marker. Okay, to start, we're gonna make a magic loop. So you're just gonna take one end of your cord and wrap it around your hand like this. <clears throat> then you're gonna take your crochet hook and stick it through the loop and then pull up a loop. Then remove the loop from your hand and hold everything in place. Bring your working cord over to the left where it normally would be. Now you're just gonna chain one. So yarn over and just pull it through. And now we're gonna work into our magic loop. So for the first round, we're gonna make six single crochets inside of our magic loop. Just insert into it, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull it through both loops. There's one single crochet, and you're just gonna repeat that five more times so you have six single crochets all together inside your magic loop. Okay, now I have my six single crochets, so I'm gonna grab the short end of the cord and pull it, and this will tighten up your magic loop. And we're gonna be crocheting in a continuous spiral, so you won't be ending your rows, you'll just be going round and round. So you're gonna go into the first single crochet, and for the first row, we're gonna make two single crochets in each stitch around. So there'll be 12 in this row. And this is where your marker is gonna come into play. So just go in the first single crochet and make one stitch. And then you're going to make one more in that same stitch. And then you're going to go ahead and place your marker before you get very far so you know which stitch was the first one. So you're gonna just stick it right in that first stitch and you're gonna do this for each row so you know where to end your row. You're just gonna do two single crochets for each stitch around for this row and there'll be 12 stitches all together once you reach your marker. Okay, so I made it back to my marker. So I know my first row is done. I'm just tightening up my magic loop a little bit more. So now we're gonna start on row three. So go ahead and remove your marker from that first stitch. And for this row, we're gonna do one single crochet in the first stitch and then two in the next. And we're gonna repeat that around. So you'll repeat it six times. So I'll show you the first thing you do is the one single crochet in the first stitch. And then you're gonna go ahead and place your marker in that first stitch so you don't lose your place. And then you're gonna do two single crochets in the next stitch. And then you're just gonna repeat that around six times. Okay, now we finished row three and we're gonna do row four, but I wanted to show you something real quick. First, I'm gonna take my marker out, but I wanna show you how um, if you keep increasing in the same places, you end up with this hexagon shape. You see how there's kind of points showing up here, 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 and here, and that's because of the increases. So what we have to do is stagger our increases for each row. So that's what we're gonna do and just follow along and I'll show you where I decided to put the increases to keep it staggered. 
For row four, we're gonna do two single crochets in the first stitch, then we're gonna do one single crochet in the next two. So you do your first one with two in the first stitch, and then we're gonna put our marker in the first stitch, and then the next two stitches, we're just gonna do one single crochet in each one. So one, and then one here. And you're gonna repeat that around six times. Okay, we just finished round four, and you can see the hexagon effect is kind of smoothing out from staggering our increases. So now for this row, again, we're gonna remove our marker, and then we're gonna do one single crochet in the next three stitches, and then two in the next stitch. So one single crochet in the first three stitches, and then we're gonna go ahead and place our marker before we continue. So we got our first stitch, and then we're gonna do one more here, and then one more after that. One in the third stitch. And then we're gonna do two single crochets in the fourth stitch. And you're gonna repeat that around six times. Okay, for row six, we're gonna do one single crochet in the next stitch, then you're gonna do two single crochets in the second stitch, and then one single crochet in the following three stitches. So you do one, then two in this one, and then one in the next three. And you're gonna repeat that around six times. And don't forget to make sure you place your marker in that first stitch. Okay, for round seven, we're gonna do one single crochet in the next three stitches. Then you're gonna do two single crochets in the next stitch, and then one single crochet in the next two stitches. And you're gonna repeat that around six times. For row eight, we're going to just do one single crochet in the first stitch. Then we'll do our two single crochets in the second stitch. And then you're gonna just do one single crochet in the next five stitches. And again, you're gonna repeat that six times. All right, we're in row nine. So now we're gonna do two single crochets in the very first stitch, and then you're just gonna do one in the next seven stitches. And you're gonna repeat that six times.
All right, just three more rows to go. This is row 10. And for this, we're gonna single crochet in the next five stitches. Then you're gonna do two single crochets in the next stitch. And then you're gonna single crochet in the next three stitches. And do that times six. Now it's time for row 11. For this one, we're gonna single crochet in the first three stitches. Then we're gonna do two single crochets in the next stitch, and then one single crochet in the next six after that. And you guessed it, repeat that around six times. Okay, we made it to row 12. This is our last row. And you're gonna do two single crochets in the first stitch, and then you're gonna single crochet in the next 10 stitches and repeat that times six. And then once you get to the end of this row, I'll show you how to finish this whole thing off. Okay, we made it. We made it to row 12. I had just this much left to spare. So if you wanna make it any bigger, you're definitely gonna need another skein of this yarn. But now I'll show you how to finish it off. So I'm taking out my stitch marker and we're just gonna slip stitch to that next stitch over. So just insert, pull through a loop and pull it through the loop on your hook. And then you can just pull the yarn loop all the way through to finish it off. And then we're gonna flip it over and weave our end in to make sure everything stays nice and secure. So just flip it over and we're just gonna weave it under a few of these stitches. And I got a smaller crochet hook. I think this is like a nine millimeter, but just whatever you have that you can get your <laughs> yarn through. And I'm just using that to weave under a couple stitches and then I'm cutting the yarn a little bit so it's not quite so crazy and long to weave under. And I recommend weaving under several stitches just to make it nice and secure since this is a rug and we're gonna be walking on it. And there is a chance we might have to wash this in the future. So I am trying to make sure it's extra secure. And then once you get it pretty good, make sure it's not pulled too tight there so it doesn't cinch it up um, there on that one side. Go ahead and cut off your excess. And then we're going to uh, do the same thing with our magic loop end. So first what I like to do is pull it really tight in the middle. And then we're gonna weave the end of the magic loop around through the all the magic loop loops again. Uh, I like to at least go around one more time um, 
just to really make that loop nice and secure. Otherwise it can come open if you're not careful. So I am just gonna do that. Weave it under all the, the stitches from the magic loop. And you can tie a knot here if you want, just to make it extra secure, but I didn't want there to be like a hard knot in the middle of my rug, so I didn't. Um, I'm hoping it will stay secure. Since this yarn is pretty um, stiff and grippy kind of, I think it'll stay okay. <laughs> so I'm hoping for the best here. So there you go. And now the one thing I did at the end of this was I added some fringe. And I need to note here that I actually didn't use the same cord as we used for the rug because I ran out. So if you want to use the same cord, you'll need to pick up two skeins or this cord that I'm using is DMC Nova Vita, which is a smaller cord and a little bit cheaper. So you could also pick up a skein of that if you want. But to attach the fringe, I'm just taking a, about a nine inch or 10 inch piece and I'm threading it through the stitch. And then I'm just wrapping the two ends around and tying an overhand knot and tightening it up. That way it was nice and secure. I tried attaching them with a lark's head knot to each stitch and that just didn't really want to stay. And this way you won't have to worry about your fringe coming off. And you're just going to repeat that all the way around for each stitch. So here's how it looks now that I've attached my fringe. And I think it kind of just makes it look more like a rug and it gives it a little more flair. You can also do it without the fringe too and it will be fine. It's up to you. I also wanted to mention that I have not tried washing this yet, but it should be machine washable. It is cotton and polyester, and as soon as I get it washed in my washing machine, I will let you know how it does. I would recommend washing it on the delicate cycle and then hanging it to dry. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and if you did, please leave a like, comment, and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos. Thanks for watching!